in the book Chance of the Dance, uh, he talks about if everything is just by chance, random chance, right? That's this atheistic idea that we just got here by chance. Nothing means anything, right? Now, nobody really believes that. They might say it. But nobody believes it because even the most hard-hearted atheist is created in the image of God and knows that some things are good and some things are bad. You can't pretend that there's no meaning in the universe. But they talk a good talk. Well, we need to talk a better talk. Chance or the dance? The dance is that the Lord God created the universe. He created it good. And he declares that the heavens declare the glory of God. So everywhere we look, we can see a living poem, the history of the world from fall to the redemption. All of that is history points to God. Everything points to God. Science points to God. In the last 50 or so years, I spoke about this, uh, I think when I talked about my miracles book maybe a year ago. Science is now corroborating that God has to exist. Folks, don't believe the lie. Science is at odds with faith. That is nonsense. Do I need to tell you the Lord who created the universe, I think he knows something about science. I think he invented science. I think he gave us curiosity to know about the world we live in, and that's called science. And, and unless we are all insane, science points to Jesus, period. History points to Jesus. Archaeology points to Jesus. You know that more and more and more there's archaeology, biblical archaeology, that we keep finding. A hundred years ago, if somebody said to you, you know what, it's all fairy tales and folk tales and there's no evidence. Well, back then, you would have said, I, I don't know what to tell you. Today, the evidence is sick, overwhelming. If you don't want to believe in the Bible, you've got problems, folks, from archaeology. Everywhere you look, everywhere you look. But as I was saying... The beauty of this world points to God. And one classic example of that is something as average, except it's not average, it's extraordinary, as marriage. It says God created us male and female. Even that is a picture of God. You want to know what God looks like? He created us in his image, male and female. We're representing different parts and, and different parts of God. And if you think about it, every race and culture in the world represents a different piece of God. That's very interesting, that all together we bespeak the image of God. But in this day, when you talk about marriage, if you say that, it's, people say, well, can you say that? Yes, you can, and I'm, and I'm saying it. <laughs> marriage you want to know what is marriage? People say, well, marriage is a contract between two people, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, it might be that. But you know what else it is? It is a picture of the union of the bride of Christ, his church, with the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Their union, which is going to be a reality one day at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Just as every sunset points to Jesus and every spring points to Jesus, every marriage is a picture of the union of the bridegroom Christ and his bride dressed in white prepared for him for this union that will happen. It is an amazing thing, folks. Everywhere you look, God has given us pictures of himself. Everywhere you look. I don't need to tell you that, um, that the scripture points to God. I don't need to tell you that. You know that. I'm talking about the second book. What do they call that? God's second book, Nature, right? Don't forget, folks, that people who don't believe this book, you don't need to use this book right away. We've got another book. You can talk about sunsets. You can talk about the beauty. I was just at a wedding, and you can speak about that. You say, what is that? It's something more than two people making a contract, I think. It speaks about heaven. 